So as you saw from that intro, you can see with the 3D camera, uh, 3D camera tracker, sorry, we can actually create 3D text that looks as though it belongs within our scene and reveal it from behind a building that's already um, part of the, the image. So if we jump into Resolve, I'll show you how we achieve this, this effect. So to start with, the media that I'm using is from Pexels. I've provided links below so you can work along with me if you want. So let's bring this into our first window and just decide where our in and out points are going to be because we don't want to use the entire clip. So we're going to um, start from a point where we know the text will be behind the lighthouse. So that seems like a decent in point. And as we come around, we're going to reveal it and we'll set that as our out point. It's a simple case of dragging that into our timeline and jumping into Fusion. So once into Fusion, we need to load our 3D camera tracker node into, um, into our node tree. And that's going to join it onto the end of our media rim. Now with the 3D camera tracker, you, certain times you don't want to track the entire scene. Anything that's got movement in it is going to give you a bad track and it's going to cause distortion in your final effect. So what we have to do is we have to mask what we want uh, our 3D camera tracker to actually track. So this water, it's all got movement in it and reflections and it's going to create a bad track and um, a poor finished outcome. So to do this we simply bring in a polygon node and we're going to mask around solid parts of our image that we want to track. And then we're going to have to animate this node, this um, polygon so that it stays with the, um, the lighthouse. It doesn't have to be exact as long as it's a rough light outline, it will uh, it will do the job we want it to do. So I've got a rough outline. If we jump a quarter way along on the timeline and just adjust our uh, polygon to fit what we want it to track. We should have a nice outline that follows our lighthouse. If you notice any points where it cuts into, just edit those points on that on that part of the timeline. And there we have our first polygon. Now the second one is we want to get this in as well, so it's just going to give us that more accurate depth of um, depth of field when it creates the. 3D camera tracking. So if we add another polygon node in, again just being really simple on the outline. So if we combine these polygons together, just check them out in there and make sure we're getting additions. There we go. That's the mat of what we are going to track. So if we come into our camera tracker and I'll load that into viewer one, just select our uh, polygon. We have a little button here called uh, preview auto track locations. When we put that on, we get these little yellow dots on our image showing us where we're going to track. Now the more of these we get, the more accurate the track will be, but the slower the track will um, will take to uh, render. So we want to develop a little more tracking. The, the further we pull pull these um, little sliders down, the more tracks we are going to get. So the first one is determining what contrast level it's going to track. The higher you put that, the more contrast needs to be for a tracker to for a tracker node to, to come on. So if we lower that down, it gives us a little more leeway on where the contrast level that's that needs to be. Um, on the image for it to track. 
and the minimum feature is how much distance between the tracking nodes so the lower we bring it there will be less distance between the tracking nodes which we'll put a few more on so if we bring this down to a 2.2 and a, a 2 about well, 0.2.2 0 0.022 and the 2 we should get a decent track so the next item is we have to put in the focal length that this was recorded in now we don't know the focal length because we don't have the data it's just been taken from a, a stock website so we're gonna have to guess roughly what it is to get a decent track so if we use just a standard Canon sensor um, looking at it, it was probably in around about a 20 mil lens equivalent so that should give us some something in the region of what we're looking for we then come over to the next tab and we press solve now this can take a um, sorry <laughs> before we uh, we do that we have to uh, press our auto track button to actually track the um, track the image so once we press the auto track button it's going to bring on all these little, little tracking points and it's going to track through the image and it's going to convert these into 3D digital representations so once that's tracked then you go make sure that your uh, focal length and everything is set where it needs to be at and we come to our solve tab now what we have down here is it shows we have 3942 tracks selected and if we press the solve button it's going to use those 3942 tracks to generate a 3D scene it can take a couple of minutes so you just have to bear with it so once your solve is completed you'll have a little summary at the top here the average solve error is how close to a pixel the 3D representation is. It's generally considered anything lower than a 1 is a good track. Anything lower than 0.5 is going to give you a very stable uh, 3D representation. So it took 58 seconds to create that solve. Uh, 0.5 is perfectly fine. If we wanted to refine it a bit further, we have these controls here. And what happens is when we adjust these, if we adjust the track length up, we'll see that so many get selected. And it's going to delete these if we want to. So if we want to get this solve error a bit tighter, we can um, adjust these settings where we want to leave at least a couple of thousand tracks for it to. Uh, for its track against now when we bring these down it's bringing down the amount of tracks that have a, a high error percentage on them so as we bring these down it's selecting those tracks and then if we delete them it's going to remove them and give us less tracks but these particular tracks that are left behind are more accurate than the ones we've deleted so if we delete those and we run our solve again we should get an even better solve error So now that we've run that solve, we can see that our error rate is 0.1, which is extremely good. So we should get a very solid text placement within this um, within this clip now. So once we've done that, we've got our uh, solve, light, solve error to where we want it to be. We come over to the uh, export tab. And what we can do before doing this export is if you bring a merge node, a 3D merge node into your scene and you connect your scene output into the 3D merge node you can then put that 3D merge node into your second viewer and rather than choosing perspective right click and choose camera tracker and it's going to show you all these little tracks and where they are within the camera so they're far too big and clumbersome at the minute to make anything out but if we go back into our camera tracker into our options tab uh, bring the locator size down we can start and see where the placement of these locators is in our scene and then if we play through you can see that the 3D representation if we remove the grid from this view we can see where the 3D rotate 3D representation has occurred. It's 
So as we can see, these are holding very solid onto this lighthouse, which means we've got a very good track. Right, so I'm happy with that. Delete that merge node. And if we just move our camera tracker and polygons over to this side, just for um, the sake of clarity. <coughs> so now we're going to our camera tracker. And while we're in the options tab, I usually like to change these um, track colors, locator colors to taken from image because then when we go back to our export tab and export our 3D scene we'll see that if we take this merge that's been exported and put it into our viewer and we just find out where this uh, is it's actually taking the colors from the points that it's uh, tracked so it gives us a little 3D in color representation. So once again the uh, tracking points are a bit big and clumbersome. So what it's generated is it's generated a 3D camera. Now this this little red line here is the is the uh, track that's generated that the camera is going to take. It's giving us a point cloud which is all these little points. So if while we're in the point cloud and we change them from a cross to a point, just bring the size down a little bit and you can see there's our um, 3D representation of our lighthouse and uh, there's the background so if we were to go to 3D camera 1 view you can see the um, 3D representation following the, the lighthouse as we go around now you also get a ground plane this is something that you usually set when you're doing the camera tracker but for this particular shot we don't really have a ground that we can we can set as an orientation so we don't need this it's it's not important we can just disconnect it and then so if we put our merge into view 1 and our render output into view 2 we can see what we're starting to deal with our 3D scene so now if we were to go back to 3D camera view we can have a look where we want our text to start appearing. So if we look, pan through the scene, we want the text to appear as though it is directly behind this um, this lighthouse. <coughs> so if we go back to our perspective, well, if we select one of these trackers around the back of the lighthouse to highlight it, let's say we select that tracker there and we go back to our perspective view you should see a little green highlight of where we want to uh, place our text in the 3D space so all I'm going to do is select the 3D text drag this node in join it up to our uh, 3D merge and we're going to start lighthouse into our text and then within the 3D space once we've located where it is there it is we're going to bring it oh, make sure you're selecting the right tool sometimes easier just to do it in the translation tab move it out a little bit so you can grab the translation tool and we want it to be directly behind this little tower here so we're going to have to do a, a bit of modification on our text we're going to have and there we go that's where we want our text to be now the problem is we need 
to mask this lighthouse so the text doesn't appear on screen until the um, it is out from behind the lighthouse. Now you could do this by connecting your media in to this render tracker as the background. So, change these around. so we have our 3D render going into the foreground and our um, media in as the background and then what we could do is we could take a polygon mask so if we say brought it to this point here, or we just put a polygon mask on, and we decided to mask around the side of here just quickly, just to give you an example of what will happen. The exact opposite of what we wanted, so we could invert on the mask and just bring that down there. And so you now you see you start to get this effect where the text is coming from behind the building, but because of how much the lighthouse moves, we would have to do a lot of frame to frame animation within this mask to keep it in line with the, um, the lighthouse. So since we've used a 3D tracker, what we can do is if we remove these and we go to our 3D tracker renderer, we can put a image plane in front of this that will project the image onto and then we have a smaller space of a stabilized image that we can mask out. So it's a little complex but I'll show you how it works. So let's go back into our 3D camera. Uh, if we go into our camera view, it makes this much easier because what we can do is we can select saying, I want this plane to be across these four and let's just make sure they're actually on the face and not around the back. Unfortunately we selected some around the back so we need to try and just select the ones on the face and that's not too bad, just remove that one. Now we can right click, point cloud, create image plane. This can create an image plane in front of that location for us. So if we were to look at our render now we have a, a big white image blocking our text. So we now just need to, um, what it does by default is it puts the image plane into a merge and then into your point cloud which is pointless for us so we're just going to disconnect that, delete the merge and bring the image plane directly into our 3D merge that we've already got. Now it needs to be a little bit bigger to ensure we cover all the text so if we just go into our image plane settings, just increase the size of it, just to make sure we we keep it covered at all times. Now we just need to pan through, just to make sure that we are <coughs> going to be covering the text even at the start. So Yeah, so the text is never going to be visible until it gets behind the lighthouse. So now what we need to do is project the image from the uh, original capture onto this plane. And we do this with a what's called a capture node. So if we shift and space and tap capture, we can input a capture node, attach that capture to our plane and it's going to project an exact representation of what is behind it on the fact so we need to remove our text from this merge because we're going to have to we're going to have to change mm -hmm. this 3D merge into a 2D uh, so we can do the polygon uh, masking around our lighthouse so for now we just remove the text drag it and drop it out here 
and we have to change a few settings that's going to look a little strange to start with is we go into our 3D camera uncheck the lock, go into protection mode enable protection and change that to texture if we put our text back in we should see the effect that that's had yep, so now we can see that the, the plane is actually being projected onto but the plane's got square edges so it's sticking up at the end and it's, it's cutting out our lighthouse text not quite where we want it to be so our lighthouse text again, bring it over here, disconnect it, we'll be connecting that back up again later now in our render tracker node we've got render options and we need to change this to open GL UV render and that's only going to render out the plane that we created so once we click on that we get this weird image because it's a stretched image of the plane it's also slightly reversed um, a bit intuitive, a bit counterintuitive should I say you'd expect us to be masking this side because we want to mask the right hand side but as you can see that bulge is actually on the left hand side so it's this side we want to mask out which means we're going to be masking down here but if we now play through our timeline we can see we've got a stabilized image of our lighthouse mm -hmm. we need to create a node that we can actually apply a mask to because we can't apply the mask really to this, uh, this render, mode, render node so we use the map control bring this in and we've got what's called a garbage mat option which I believe is this one yep a garbage mat and that means we can cut out part of this image that we do not want uh, rendered so here we go again we select our polygon node and we're going to simply draw around the outline of the um, lighthouse now it is a bit stretched so it's making things difficult we can alter this because it's due to the shape of the image plane be able to there we go that makes life much easier you can see the outline it's still going to be covering all the text this should make doing our, um, our polygon a little bit easier so let's go and set our polygon points back where we want them to be and we can see there's a little ridge here let's bring it around uh, this is the part where you want to be as accurate as you can be the more accurate you are the better the outcome will be so if we go around our entire image plane and now if we collect this connect this right click drop it over our mat control into our garbage mat and put our garage mat in the view we can see that it cuts out everything outside of our um, lighthouse so now it's a case of scrubbing through correcting where the lighthouse might lose and slightly move outside of the mask Presentation. Don't want any blue in there. So now it's just the case of being as accurate as you can be.
because our text doesn't go all the way to the end of the video behind the lighthouse, we don't have to mask this out right to the end of the timeline. So we want to see how far we want to be masking. So after we've gone halfway through, we we now need to combine our scenes to see what we've got. So we do this by creating an instance of our image plane. So we do that by Ctrl C to copy it and then right click, paste instance. That's going to give us an identical copy of that plane. We also need to uh, reuse our 3D camera. So if we join that with our instance, it'll instantly create a 3D merge for us. And we can join our text into that 3D merge. And if we put the 3D merge into our viewer, um, and I connect our Mac control into our image plane, we'll start to see what it is that we're trying to achieve. So, let's create a 3D render against our merge and use that for our viewer. And let's just pan through and see what we're getting so far. So, as we pan through, we should get to the point where our text starts to become re revealed from behind the lighthouse. And that is pretty much the last frame that we need to do our masking on. So if we go back into our polygon mask and just make sure this last frame is accurate. blue here and that's why that E is not quite in line. So we bring this down. And now it's just a case of going back each scene frame by frame just to have a look and see how your uh, your text is lining up against this mask so we can see straight away the L is getting cut off a bit here which means my mask needs to come a bit further down the lighthouse so I'll drag this off that's fine the E we can see too much blue around the top so that needs bringing in a little bit Once we have it somewhere where we need it to be, we can then start using the soft edge within our uh, our polygon just to clean up any any mishaps. see the little white lines on your timeline here these are where you've done previous animations to your mask so it's usually easy going back to them and correcting any errors within those ones and then creating extra um, keyframes so we know that this needs something at the bottom for our L So if we play through slowly now, we'll put our render on one screen, make it a bit bigger so we can see what we're doing, and deselect our polygon, and we'll just play through a bit of a time. We can see our top of our E starting to be revealed, and then we slowly get the reveal from behind the lighthouse. Now, if we zoom in at these points, we can see it's not quite accurate. There is a bit of 
discrepancy between the edge of the lighthouse and the text showing. So one of the best things to do is go into your polygon node, bring the soft edge up ever so slightly and just zoom in and it just masks any mistakes that we might be making. Find that right level. And then at this point you can decide if you want to make any alterations to your text. It doesn't quite line up as it's coming out the uh, the back of the line out the lighthouse. So if I go into my text, into my transform, I think that might be the y axis. No, it wasn't the y axis. There we go, the z axis. So let's try it as it lines up nicely there as it comes out the back of the lighthouse. My mask there, it is big not quite correct and cutting off some of my text so at this point it really is just a case of going through and refining how you want it to look so there we've got something that's quite professional Just play it out, so the text would look as though it was fixed in place, and that's really part of our scene. So, there is um, a few little extras you can do if you want. You can create another mask for the pole so that the pole actually appears on top of the text. You'll see there the text is on top of the pole. So, if we was to create another polygon node, connect it to here, and within. Just need to draw where the pole actually runs. So I'll go to that polygon there. Just see my level. We can see exactly where this pole runs. Just make it nice and smooth. And all we need to do is increase our border width to the point where it brings the pole in front of our text. And just like we did with the other polygon. Select and animate. If you press Shift and B, it puts a box around the polygon and just makes moving things a little easier. So let's bring our level back up. Right, we need to change these nodes around because it's trying to add to the um, actual polygon mask and we want to subtract. So if we take this away and turn this polygon into this one, we can then merge subtract and we should see a subtraction line where the pole is and 
we can put that into our mat control garbage mat. And now if we bring up our render, play it through, we should see that the pole is actually over the top of the text and it looks as though it's really coming from behind the lighthouse. And then it's a simple case of connecting your render to your media out into the edit page, put it in full screen and wait for it to uh, proxy up and you can play it and see how it looks. So I hope this was helpful and um, if you want me to do any more tutorials like this please like and subscribe and um, I know that you guys enjoyed it and I'll, I'll keep some more coming. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.